Hey, what's up everybody? It's your girl Merle and I am so excited to be here with you guys today. We're going to be trying something that has shook me to my core because I've had to come to the realization that there's a chance that I have been cooking mushrooms wrong my entire life. It's just like I thought I knew them, you know? The bottom line is Mark over at Sauce Dash did a video that was called Oil Your Mushrooms, You'll Thank You. I watched it and I thought, what is he talking about? Is he making some kind of broth or stock? But no, he's saying you should put your mushrooms in water, oil them until the water evaporates, and then proceed to saute them. Hey, <laughs> it's uh, Merle from the future. Well, the past for you now, but because I obviously filmed this before you're watching it. What happened to my clothes? What happened to my hair? What's happening? Great question. It's a bold move for the start of a video, right? Here's what, what, what happened. I recorded this video. I went to edit it. I saw that my audio died two and a half minutes in. So that was fun. Within that time, I got my hair cut nice and short for the summer. And I also put that dress in the washing machine. But <laughs> deadlines, that's life. I filmed the beginning. This is now the part I have had to refilm. And then you'll see at the end, it goes back to my old outfit. So. You know, it's like memento, but with mushrooms. Which brings me back to today's topic. Mushrooms. Mushrooms are not plants, they're not animals, they're fungi. Wild, right? I mean, it's kind of just wild to me that they're not plants. There are over 10,000 different kinds of mushrooms. And actually, I was thinking it'd be kind of fun to play a little game here of uh, two truths and a lie. Don't cheat. Ready? Initiate game show. All right, everybody, we've got two truths and a lie. For the first fact, the largest single living thing on the planet is actually a mushroom. B, mushrooms are actually genetically closer to humans than they are plants. And C, 10% of all mushrooms are toxic. You submit your answers and I'll pick a lucky winner and the winner gets absolutely nothing other than bragging rights. So I saw this video and he cited all these articles of all these chefs that were like, boiling mushrooms is the way to go. You should be boiling mu mushrooms. You actually can't even overcook mushrooms. All these things that are just blowing my mind. I'm like, oh my gosh. Now I always knew that mushrooms should be placed in a hot pan, not overcrowded and just be allowed to sweat out the moisture before you go about adding oil and salt and whatever seasonings you want. But in this case, we're going to be boiling them down in water first and then letting them crisp up. So the first one we're gonna be talking about today is the shiitake mushroom. The first step for this is to clean these babies off and we're gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna put them in some cool water, make sure I get all the dirt off or the growth media, whatever it is. We're gonna remove those woody stems and then we're gonna slice up the caps real nice. So we're gonna start with the no boil method and we're gonna let them sweat their water content out, but keep stirring them so they get evenly crisped up. Once they're looking good, I'm gonna add just a little bit of olive oil and salt to crisp them up even more. And ba boom, ba bam, bang, bang, boom. <laughs> that took about eight minutes. That wasn't too long, it wasn't too complicated. We've got them ready to go. Next up, we have the boil method. I didn't know how much water to add, so I just covered them. But let me tell you, this took a minute. This took like 28 to 30 minutes for it to boil down and then for it to crisp up after all the water had evaporated. This took a while. There's a chance I put too much water in there, but I don't know. They said they can't be overcooked, so the only thing that adding too much water would be that it would take more time. Not that it would like ruin the cooking process. And as they continued to boil, they just got so teeny, tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny. Shiitake mushrooms, as you probably know, are like a flavor powerhouse, but they also tout some pretty impressive health benefits. It is said that shiitakes can advance immunity, support cardiovascular health, and more. Not to mention they're just so good for stocks and soups and bases of vegan ramen and vegan bacon. They're just great. They taste delicious. And then once all the water boiled off, I let them crisp up same way, add a little oil and a little salt, saute them up, bing, bang, boom. The shiitake broth was on the dark side. It was like a medium colored broth, literal liquid gold that is just like flavorful and would be so good for so many things. So I think what I'm gonna do next time is double the amount of water I use, take half of it to keep as like a stock and then leave the rest to let the mushrooms boil out. And I think that's like a big brain move. All right, and then we get to the verdict of these shiitake mushrooms, which you'll notice I'm in my clothes from previous. Just ignore that and pretend that's not happening. Boiled, not boiled. Okay, trying the shiitake. Boiled. Oh, tender. Way more tender. The other kind is kind of deflated. It's bouncier. I think it's maintained more flavor by absorbing the juices. As far as the difference, I would give it like an 8.5. Maybe an 8.8. .8. I was really impressed with the flavor of the shiitake mushrooms when we use the boil method. Okay, so next we have the lion's mane mushroom. So we're gonna start out with the no boil method for these, same shebang. Clean them, shave off that stem, 
off in like the weird part. Prime apart with your fingers into nice little bite-sized pieces. The no boil method, we're gonna go right into it, toss them in the pan, let them sweat. They really do sweat, like they, they are bubbling. They are double, double boil in trouble. Double, double, toil in trouble, not boil. And it's not double, it's bubble, bubble, boil and toil and trouble. It's not even Halloween, I wish it was. But it only took about seven minutes for them to crisp up and be ready to eat. Same thing, add a little olive oil, a little salt. You get it by now. The boil method for these ones, the broth was on the lighter side, lighter medium, I'd say. And it smelled interesting. This lion's mane mushroom is boiling and it smells like lobster. It like legitimately smells like lobster. I smell it. It's so weird. Lion's mane mushrooms, I feel like they're like the royalty of the mushroom world. They're also a good source of essential minerals like manganese, zinc, and potassium. I'm even guilty of using lion's mane mushroom powder in my smoothies in the hopes that they're gonna like improve my memory and cognitive function. I'm gonna try both of these lion's mane mushrooms, then regular, pretty tender. A little soft, yummy. Oh my gosh, there's a hummingbird. Oh, I love the hummingbird so much. It's way, I notice it way more in the texture. Flavor wise, if I'm honest with you, I don't notice a huge difference with this one, but the texture, I do. But yeah, I would say for the lion's mane, it's all about the texture. The flavor, I don't notice a huge shift. The texture is significant. I'd say 8.5 out of 10 difference. It took about 18 to 22 minutes to fully utilize the boil method for these ones. I was very impressed with the texture of these. I thought that the bite, the chew, the mouth feel, for them was really, really good. Next up we have the oyster mushroom and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna clean them off, do a little dunkaroo. Then we're gonna slice off the bottoms. They really are so beautiful. They look like something you would find in like Fern Gully, you know? So I do the no boil method first. Took about 10 minutes. Now the boiling method took about 20 minutes. Oyster mushrooms come in a range of different colors. Gray, golden, brown, silver, tan, cream. Oyster mushrooms are low in calories, enriched in minerals and vitamins. They're also high in antioxidants. So I was really impressed with the flavor and the texture of the boil method for the shiitake. I thought it really kicked it up a notch. Mark was saying in his video that he thinks maybe the whole process of them sort of boiling in their own filth, not filth, boiling in their own juices is kind of what gives them more of the flavor. They're basically marinating in their own flavor, not filth, which would make sense to me. Not boiled. And this one is boiled. They look a little pretty similar, but I would say these ones look a little juicier than these guys. Just a little bit more, you know, a little more luscious. Okay, so I'm trying the non-boiled oyster mushrooms first. Tasty. They're more fibrous than the other mushrooms we've tried. This is the boiled one. More chew to it, but like fuller, more tender and more flavorful. This one I noticed the flavor in a lot more. It's interesting that I noticed the flavor more than these because I don't think of oyster mushrooms as the most flavorful, but I definitely noticed the difference. They're just a little juicier. They're a little less dry than the non-boiled ones. Texture wise, it's almost the same. It's slightly different, like a five out of 10 difference. Flavor wise, maybe like a seven, 7.5. Thank you for your patience on the movie magic slash very obvious not movie magic. Okay, so next up we have the portobello mushroom. Now this one is probably the one you're gonna think of as like your everyday mushroom. Baby bella mushrooms, which are like super common ones and they're pretty similar to white button mushrooms, you know, are just baby portobello mushroom. Baby bella portobello, you see? It's the, basically the same thing, okay? Just the, whatever, okay? This stalk was dark. I went ahead and I took the stems, I cleaned off my portobellos, I removed the stem, and I sliced them up nicely. And let me tell you, the boil method on this one, the broth was dark. It released so much color. It just shedded so much water. It had so much water in it and there was so much to release. The boil method took about 25 minutes or so, and the no boil took like nine minutes or something like that. One thing I didn't realize about portobello mushrooms is that they freaking, they scream. Okay, this is boiled, this is not boiled. So let's try the not boiled first. Mm. Mm hmm. I love portobello. Try the boiled. With this one, the flavor, I notice a difference. Honestly, the texture is pretty similar to me. A difference in the texture, I give it like a three out of 10. Difference in the flavor, I give it like an 8.5. 8.8 .8 out of 10. And then last but not least, burr, 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 we have the king trumpet mushroom. Now the boil method took about 20, 25 minutes. It had a clear broth to it. And the no boil method 
didn't take too long. I think it was like 10 minutes or 11 minutes or 12 minutes or something like that. <laughs> and with this one, I would say, yeah, the texture was pretty darn good. Um, flavor, a little more flavorful, kind of the same. They're not the most flavorful mushroom in my opinion. They don't, they don't taste like anything. They taste very distinct, but it's not necessarily a flavor I want to enhance, if you know what I mean. Here are the boiled ones. Here are the not boiled ones. Well, let's try the non-boiled. Love King Trumpet, you know, they've got that nice kind of scallopy texture, that nice bouncy bite to them. They are not overly flavorful, but they definitely have a distinct taste. I'll try a little bit of the cap as well. Also got a great bounce chew to it. Let's try the boiled ones. Ooh, wow. The texture is significantly better, more tender. Flavor's a little bit enhanced too. The flavor is not that much different. I'd give it like a five. And then the texture, I would give seven, 7.5. It's definitely there. It's definitely like a more succulent chew, but it was not crazy different, but it was good. Those are all the mushrooms I tried today. I'm gonna be honest with you. Am I gonna do this again? Do I feel like I've been missing out my whole life? I really don't. I know this is like kind of scandalous, I feel like, cause all these chefs and they believe and they stand by this method and they're probably, you know what? For them, it, it's, it's worth it. For me, it's just not totally worth it. The time it takes and having to monitor it, you know, like, I don't know. I just, I might do it again. If I'm already gonna be in the kitchen hanging out and it's gonna take a while, maybe I'll do it, you know, maybe I will. But just like quickly zip zap zopping a like rice bowl together for myself on a weeknight, I don't know if I will. I don't know if I noticed enough of a significant change to really do it. If I'm gonna do it again, shiitake and portobello, maybe lion's mane. Like those stood out the most to me as far as change and improvement goes. But for the amount of time I kind of spent waiting like this video took me two days to shoot it's definitely an improvement pretty much across the board but I don't know if it's enough of an improvement that I'm gonna change my quick lazy ways please let me know though what you think I'm not trying to bash anybody who likes this method I want to quickly announce the name for last week's plant thank you for so many of you who submitted names for this beauty oh this one's dead that's okay, that happens. That's part of plant ownership. So most of you submitted Persephone, that name, which is a great name. It makes so much sense. I'm gonna do something crazy here. In the last one, I picked the one that was submitted the most. But for this one, even though Persephone just like feels like the right answer, I'm gonna name it one that a few of you submitted just because it looks like it, Medusa. I mean, like, it's kind of perfect. It does look like Medusa. I love the story of Medusa. Also on the Greek theme, but it just looks like a bunch of little snake heads and I think that's really cute. Thank you guys all so, so, so much for submitting your ideas. Okay, so the next plant I need you all to name for me is gonna be this little beastie here. We got a Monstera Adansani. Uh, she's beautiful, she's cute, she drapes, she's got holes like Swiss cheese. Kinda looks like a Monstera, but small. Fun, great for decor, I feel like a pretty popular plant. So submit your plant names and I'll let you know in the next video which one I pick. Oh my God, there's a hummingbird. Oh my God, on the right. <gasps> Love them so. Oh my God! There it is. Do you see it? Do you see it? I love you so much. I love you so. Oh. I just wanna fly. I'm like a bird. I'll only fly away. Baby, I'll only feel you to know it. Okay, that's it. Have a great day. <laughs> Do I look like a maiden that I'm about to hop on my horse? Look at this. Chauncey. All right. Toodle pip.